So Giannis and Damian Lillard are teammates, apparently. And this is like the last thing I thought I was going to do a podcast on today. I'm sure you guys thought I went into some retirement. You know, oh, he got into college. He forgot about us. But I promise you, that is not the case. I just It just took the league blowing up and Damian Lillard getting traded unexpectedly for something like this to happen. But of course, before I get right into this video, I'd like to remind you to like, subscribe, turn on the notification bell. Because help me out a little bit. Of course, follow my boy Ricky on Instagram, Ricky the Creator. His um, Instagram tag is going to be left in the description. So you guys go ahead and follow that. But of course, let's get right into it. Now, before I open the floor for everybody to say what they want to say, whether that be in the comments or whether that be in my Instagram or anything, I need to go through the full trade details first. Now, the Bucks get Damian Lillard. We've already covered that. I think the Blazers, though, got a good little package out of it. I think the Blazers did good. You think? Drew Holiday and DeAndre Ayton is a good package. You know what? That is a good package, but I believe that they could have got more, especially for Dane. I think that's a good package. I would take Drew Holiday and DeAndre Ayton, like... People would think after losing Dame, you would be like dead in the right. Your team is going to win two games. You know, you're going to be terrible. But for what for what it could have been, I think the Blazers got a really, really good trade out of this. Now, the Suns got absolutely fleeced. Yusef Nurkic, Nasir Little, Keon Johnson, Grace Allen, and DeAndre Ayton's no longer your center. I think that's a fleece. I think that's a bad trade for the Suns. Man, not too much because, remember, the Suns needed depth. I think that's a bad trade. I, I won't agree with that. I like Grayson Allen off the bench. Yes. I like Nasir Little off the bench. See. Keon Johnson is good. Um. Yusef Nurkic as a starting center is probably honestly better for that team situation than DeAndre Ayton was. I mean, the Suns, I think the Suns had a good trade. Because yeah. the Suns it, got rid of a toxic person in the locker room. Yeah. Which they didn't need. And they also added more to their bench. Either way, DeAndre Ayton had to get out. It was time for DeAndre Ayton to go. It was time for him to go. I I liked DeAndre Ayton too. You know, I remember his first overall pick. He had all this hype. Everyone thought he was going to be like a thirty and ten guy. He's still fifteen. So you know, DeAndre Ayton is good. He could bring something good to the Blazers. He go fifteen eleven. Then you know they have um they have forget his name all the Scoo Henderson. They have Scoo Henderson over there. So I think the Blazers did good in this trade. I think the Suns got fleeced though. That I won't change my mind on that. I think the Suns got fleeced. Because for you to trade... I mean, they for you, pick up a bad contract, yeah. Yeah, but for you to get involved in a trade like that, pick up Yusef Nurkic, who is on a crazy contract, considering how much he brings. Mm-hmm. Grayson Allen, who, you know, he has his little moments of toxicity, I would say. Nasir Little, who hasn't really produced at a high level. I remember Nasir Little coming out of college. Keon Johnson, who's who's pretty good. I mean, I, mean, I guess, you know... The, I, I don't think the Suns got the best end of the trade. The Bucks obviously got the best part of it. I think the Blazers did good, but I'm not sure about the Suns. But going into my next topic, I heard somebody, and it's kind of my hot take for the video, that someone said this this might be the best duo since Kobe and Shaq. Whoa, whoa. I, I think that's whoa. a push. Whoa. I think that's a push. Um, can they win the championship first? Yeah, I, I, yeah that's what I'm saying. You know, because what people don't know is that Kobe and Shaq, and I want everybody to listen in, Kobe and Shaq, They didn't just happen overnight. All right, Kobe was drafted in 96, I want to say, and it took him three, four years until he got to that level. Shaquille O'Neal followed that up with three of the greatest playoff performances the league has ever seen. Kobe Bryant was one of the best young players to ever enter the league. So before we get into that discussion, I need to see these guys win a chip first. I need a ring. I need a ring or two. Really, you need three. I need, okay. a th- I need a three-peat before you enter that discussion. Thank you. Thank yeah. I need, need a I need a three-peat before you enter that discussion. LeBron and D-Wade, you're like, do you do you guys really think Dame and Giannis are better than LeBron and D-Wade? I feel like that, that early 2010 Heat team gets so much disrespect because it's like when they were when they were like there, we we respected them, but now that they're gone. We don't remember how good that team was. was. Like, cooking, like, oh my God. Cooking. LeBron used to be a different animal, bro. But that's not the topic of the video, so I'm going to go ahead and move on. Um, another thing is health. Health I mean, between these guys. I feel like Giannis will be fine. I mean, Giannis can play through anything. We saw it in, uh, what, 2021? That is true. That's true. He played through a bunch of stuff. But Even last season, he played through a bunch of stuff. Even then, you know, Giannis... It's rare to see a player nowadays. Like back in the '90s, you could count on a player to give you 82 games in a season. That's true. Now that's not going to happen. You're lucky if your superstar plays 70 games in a year nowadays, and that's not something I like because, as a fan, as a fan, I feel like you want to watch the best players in the league play on a daily basis. But that's just not where our league is heading right now. So as far as staying healthy, I think they'll be good. I think Damian Lillard is the only one you have to be concerned about. 
Because what people need to realize is Dame is 32 years old, bro. Dame, Dame is, yeah, Dame's not young. He's not some young prodigy. Dame is 32 years old. And even if it doesn't feel like it, you have to take that into consideration. Um, now going to your prediction. You go first for this one. I feel like I've been talking old video. What's your prediction for um, Milwaukee this season? Go from regular season record. What do you think they're going to be in the regular season? How many games they're going to win? And how far do you think they're going to make it into the playoffs? Ooh, it's on the spot. Um, there's 82 games in the season. Hopefully they don't shut down to 72. I believe their record will be high 50s. High 50s. Probably. Can't do the math. Okay. Well, but less than 30 wins. You you said less than 30 wins or less than 30 losses? Less than 30 losses. Losses, right. Um, now that you said 50 plus, I'm going to go with 60. I'm going to go in the high range. I think if things work out perfectly, the Milwaukee Bucks will win 70 plus games. I'll go ahead and say it. I think if things work out like perfectly, I mean, fall. Flawlessly, excuse me. If if the Bucks find a way to perfectly mesh those two with the depth they have, I think they can be a sixty, a high sixty to seventy one team. They, I think the Bucks can do that. They definitely are the number one seed. Oh yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. And speaking of number one seeds, I put together a list of their competition. See, because I could go around and go over the stats and how they could win, but. Um, competition. So just give me your reaction on this. I think their competition, four teams, two from the East, two from the West. One are the Lakers with LeBron and AD. Yes. I think they made a couple good moves this year. My team is so much better than last season. Yeah, I, I think Christian Wood adds a lot of weaponry to that bench that they needed. Um, I think the defense is going to improve this year. I feel like Anthony Davis can finally get his health in check, and if he can, he's an MVP candidate. That's not debatable in my opinion. Um, uh, you got Russ off. You got Russ. Russ. Yeah, Russ is gone. We have a point guard in D'Lo. We have shooters now. They Austin got Williams. they got Gabe Vincent. Gabe, Gabe Vincent is a good point now. guard off the bench. So Number I think two. I think the Lakers are respectable. I can see the Lakers winning fifty something games. Um, but a team that was an eight seed last year, the Heat have beat the Bucks two out of the last three times they faced them in the playoffs. I don't believe it. I don't believe they're going to do anything this year. You don't I think the Heat are going to do anything? Won't make the playoffs. Uh, I'm not sure about that take. Don't I don't know it. if I agree with that. Like J- Jimmy know. Butler is not going to make the playoffs. Yes, because Jimmy Butler. Now, what is Jimmy Butler's reputation in the regular season? I mean, he he kind of chills in the regular exactly. season. Exactly. Now, if he chills too much and they keep losing. Hey, that playoff spot looked like it's about to go down, the, down, down. The Heat, the Heat have a winning culture, though. That's the thing. The Heat have a winning culture. They've they built a winning team. They've got Pat Riley. Um, they've got Eric Spolstra. They've uh-huh. built a winning culture, in my opinion. So I don't see them not making the playoffs, but they're not beating that Bucks team. There's uh-huh. no way. You can't uh-huh. you can't compete with that spacing if you're the Miami Heat. They lost Gabe Vincent. They lost a lot of their depth this year. Exactly. That's um, what um, Jimmy Butler is 35 years old going into next season. Bam Adebayo is a great player, but nonetheless, he's not a superstar center. I'll just go ahead and say it. Nope. He's not going to give you 30 and 10. He's not going to drag a team. And that's okay. Um, but I think going to the Heat, I think the Heat are going to be forced to blow it up really soon. I think I think pretty really? soon. I think they're going to have to blow it up really soon. This Damian, the expectation was for the Heat to get Damian Lillard. And I think that's this true. just blew up right in their faces. That's true. I think the Heat, if next year is not a success, they're going to blow it up. They're going to find a way to trade Jimmy Butler. They're going to get rid of Bam Adebayo for a package, probably draft picks. And that's going to be that. I think the Heat are going to go into a rebuild. And I think that's their best option now. Because think about it. Jimmy Butler is old, and you're going to be paying him $60 million really soon. You'd rather not pay that if you're the Miami Heat. The contract is what it be. Yeah. I would say that the Heat have too much of, again, a winning culture to tank. They're going to be mid until they find a player that they can trade for. That will be good. Or a player that can come to them. That will be good enough to bring them up. I think the Heat have to rebuild. Because I, I, I think if they want it to happen as fast as possible, they need to rebuild. What happened after uh, LeBron? Um, that, oh, that is true. They were mid. They kept D-Wade. You know, 43 wins. Yeah, 44 all, wins. You know, had that like 10,000 um, first-round exits. They tried drafting with Justin Winslow and yeah. uh, who else? Mm. Shout out to Justice Winslow. Justice Winslow was so nice I as a rookie. remember him, bro. So nice as a rookie. Justice Winslow should have been a superstar in the league. He should have. He should have been. He had all that potential. And then it was mid. They floated because then they got Tyler Hero at right. a decent pick. I think yeah. lottery. That's um, another guy. They have Jimmy Tyler Hero. Hero still. I forgot about Tyler Hero. If Tyler Hero don't improve, they're gonna trade him. Yeah, I think they. I think they should. I think I'm gonna. I'm getting kind of off track here, but Hero to like a team like the Lakers would be ridiculous. 
Hero coming off the bench, like Hero is a walking bucket. The guy has twenty points per game. I think him, like even to the Bucks, him with any contending team that needs that spark off the bench would be really good. And Hero has one of those personalities, right? He could go to a big city and be super yeah, popular, yeah. be the superstar. Like he could go to New York or Brooklyn and succeed. Oh my, New York, New York, the Lakers, um, the Warriors. Oh my God, the yeah. Warriors is the perfect fit for Tyler. Super teams, but um, yeah. next team that's the Bucks competition are the Celtics. I with Jason Tatum Celtics. and Jalen Brown. Jason Tatum, in my opinion, is a top ten player in the NBA without a doubt. He's a walking thirty points, nine rebounds, and five assists. Jalen Brown is probably overpaid, but he's from Atlanta, so not too much on him. He's probably overpaid, in my opinion. But Jalen Brown is still 25, 5-5. Five five. He's still one of the best shooting guards in the league. I think the Celtics are a team that can beat anybody when they're healthy and focused. Now, um, Jason Tatum has his moments where he craps the bed in the playoffs and plays like it's his first time being on an NBA floor. But I think if the Celtics get it together, they could be a really good team. I think the Celtics are going to give you their average 50 wins. Yeah. And depending on how they look and how motivated they are, they're either going to be a first or third round exit. I mean, excuse me, a second or third round exit. Yeah. Or make it to the finals and win the finals. The Celtics have crazy potential. They have depth. They have the coach. That, well, I don't know. The coach has been a little iffy. I mean, if you're talking about Joe Mazzulla, that's, that's a definitely iffy coach. Mazzulla is iffy to me, in my opinion. Definitely. I think he's iffy. But I think the Celtics in general have a really, really, really good um I think they have a good culture going. I think they built a great team. But going to the next team, the defending champions, the Nuggets and um Joker with Murray and MPJ and all the depth they have over That's there. one of the two teams I believe that can beat the Bucks. I think they can beat them because Three I I think Joker's defensive impact is underrated. He's still a dude who's seven feet two eighty, no matter how you put it. He's not a great defender. He can't, he can't slide. That's the problem. But he's not somebody who's just gonna just gonna let you lay the ball up on him. Like he's not horrible. You know what I'm saying? He's I, not terrible. If he's not terrible, he's definitely bad. He's not terrible, in my opinion. And then, of course, Jamal Murray is gonna do his thing. He's kind of like kind of like Jimmy Butler. Like chills in the regular season. Not gonna make the All Star game. Jamal. Just gonna just gonna cruise. And then in the playoffs, he turns it on. Yeah, gonna thirty six, points a game. Thirty, yep. 30, yeah. maybe five assists. Um, and then another team I actually didn't have on this list though. I um. I forgot to put him on there because I had to make a script during the middle of my history class. Shout out to you, Mr. Um, I always forget bro's name. I just forgot my teacher's name live on a podcast. Was just in that class. Yeah, I was just in this class. Mr. Farrington. Shout out to you, Mr. Farrington, for letting me make a script in the middle of class without trying to get on me too much. Um, and actually, he heard the news. He's one of the first people who heard the news when it came through. But I think the Suns are a team you have to mention who can compete with anybody. They have... Oh, yeah. uh, scoring juggernaut with Kevin Durant. They have one of the best shooting guards in the league with um, uh, with Devin Booker. They have a guy who is a proven 30-point-per-game scorer and uh, Bradley Beal over here remembering names. This team is literally an offensive convoy. Like, they might be the best offense in the league easily. This team could score 115 points per game with ease, in my opinion. But the issue is the defense. They cannot defend a pole. They can't defend, nothing, they can't defend anything. Dude. They're not going to be able to defend. Okay, one, they ain't got no good big to defend Giannis. Yeah. Or Brooke Lopez, let alone both of them at the same time. And then you have um, Nurkic. Nurkic is going to help them, but I don't think Nurkic solves the problem. You got to double Giannis. And what do you do when you double Giannis? You kick it out to Middleton. You kick it out to Dane. Right. That's gonna be that's gonna be interesting. They're gonna. I, I'm still not sure how they're gonna make that work because in the playoffs, I thought KD and Book was enough. KD and Book were cooking in the playoffs they last weren't. season. I mean, like it's combining for uh, what's it called? They combined for like sixty points. Yes, 80 points, that was ridiculous. Still win by like three. That's not. That's not good. You can't. The, have a the thing. The thing was their depth. Their depth yeah, was really bad. Depth. They didn't have any depth at all as a team. I wouldn't be opposed to seeing Bradley Beal come off the bench. I'll say it. I think Bradley Beal as a six-man would be magnificent for the Suns. I think that's their best course of action. I think they'll play him like a uh, Russell Westbrook. How they played Russ when Russ was starting on the Lakers. Uh-huh. He'll be in the second unit, but he's still starting. 
that's mm-hmm. that's probably that's probably what they're gonna do with them. I mean, that's all you can do because exactly. what you're gonna learn watching the NBA is you can't just group up a bunch of thirty point per game scores and point guards and expect them to win. That's just not how the league works. Nope. But you know, and people say, "Oh, the Warriors did that," but they not did. exactly. You know, they Stephen did. Curry is he's a point guard. He's a playmaker. He can make opportunities for everybody else. Clay Thompson, at that point in his career, was one of the best 3 and D players in the league. He thrived off people driving off the basket and kicking it out. Kevin Durant, again, scoring juggernaut, one of the greatest players to ever lace up in the NBA, with all due respect. He's just a blood player. And then you had the glue guy, Draymond Green. And no matter if you like him or don't, you have to admit that that guy is vital to the Warriors' success. Vital to the Warriors' success. Um, But... In terms of the video, bro, just give me a conclusion. How do you feel about the trade in general? Like, what did you think when you saw it pop up on your phone from Shams or whoever you may follow? And you saw it on my Instagram at Michael J Cannon. By the way, you guys definitely go follow that. How did you feel when the trade first got announced? Oh my God, as an NBA fan, it's exciting. Oh my God, we're watching two of the best players in the league on the same team. It's easily gonna be in the finals, and whoever they play against is gonna be good. Theater, too? That's amazing. Yeah, because a, a Bucks and Nuggets finals might be two of the crappiest markets in the NBA. Not going to lie. But really because of the players, that might be one of the yes. most watched finals ever. And think of the international impact. That's like, you have Giannis is. coming from Greece. Um, you have Nikola Jokic coming from Jokic. Serbia. So, that that I think Nikola Jokic is from Serbia. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't like mixing up people's countries. Um, but overall, my feelings... I think it was a shocker, especially just yesterday. They had reported that the Raptors were the front runners to land him. That was a major shocker to me. I mean, the Raptors, if I if I look back, the Raptors were barely even involved in the trade in general. So it looked like this this just just something that happened today. Like maybe they talked it over today, decided the Raptors wouldn't be involved. But ultimately I feel really good about the trade. That was shocking again in the middle of class. But I, I think the Bucks are in for a really good season. Things are definitely going to get interesting. The fact that they kept Chris Middleton in a Damian Lillard deal is one of the most shocking parts That's of the whole thing to me. I, I, I don't know how you don't trade Chris Middleton. I mean, I, I guess I, I guess Drew Holiday was enough. But, no. but man, it's, it's hard to cover Damian Lillard's impact. But... Most of all, I think the Bucks are going to be really good. I'm going to end this video right here, though. Make sure to like, subscribe, turn on notifications, but guys, help me out a little bit. Um, the lighting, I know it probably wasn't that good, this video. I'm going to try and get that corrected as we go. Uh, you know, I'm in a new location. I'm used to being in my room by myself. But Brody Ricky wanted to record the video with me, so I waited on him. They're going to be a lot more special guests because now I'm in college. There are a lot more people who are available, yada, yada, yada. I won't bore you with the whole shebang. But, of course, thank you for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, turn on, turn on the notifications. Excuse me. And thank you for watching. Hey, yo, peace.